Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. How are you doing? It's number 28. It's number 28. It's the 28th week <laughs> since we finished doing Shore Insight and we've been doing Sounding Shadows. It is, and each week then. brings some new things, doesn't it? But first of all, we have to... Well, actually, first of all, we have to start with an apology, don't we? We do, yes. <laughs> Last week, um, I brought into uh, the recording some really beautiful little ideas for Advent. Now, because the source that I was given was uh, to do with an Anglican school in New Zealand, that's where I thought it had come from and that the children had written them, but actually... Uh, they were written by a friend of ours called Amy Robinson who wrote them and they're, they're part of a book and they're being used in services all over the world. So apologies to Amy. I think that's the oddest form of plagiarism that I've ever <laughs> come across, really. Yes. But they are very beautiful and worth looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Amy. Now we know they're yours. I'm pleased about that. Um, yeah. Lots of things so, uh, really looking good as well as the the tedium well they are i mean it was it was <laughs> the uk was first for once i mean that's almost unheard of i think but first yeah, in the world the very first person to be vaccinated in the world yes. um and it was for once somebody invisible became visible oh so they, much um, so an elderly lady who yeah. may we don't know much about her but uh, she made that biblical verse come true the, the first should be last and the last should be first That's and right. there she is she is the very <laughs> very first she's a world celebrity she is and we <laughs> were really really pleased for her yeah. it's wonderful. and actually it is important isn't it that you know i know we've said it before but one of the things about this pandemic is that the invisible has become visible and so many very elderly people who might have felt that maybe nobody quite thought about them much anymore are suddenly first in line for the vaccine yeah. and and their value their story who they are mm. <laughs> has suddenly become really important just well, we've as we've always should known be. that haven't we the elderly people we've known well have such a, a richness and a wealth of memories and yeah. all sorts of stuff to talk about yeah. might say a little bit about that later on um yeah yeah, first we and we've heard from lots of people. This we have, week, and, and we? some really nice things actually. Um, yeah. Somebody who said they'd had a really special day, and somebody who's been waiting for so long for a hip operation, obviously put off because of COVID, and finally had it, and doing really well. So that's lovely. Yeah, um, and I had a poem sent to us, which was really interesting. We'll we'll pick out a few bits of it because it's just worth. Quoting some of it, here's the first bit we're going to quote. I'm a virtual person in a virtual world saying something important, but I have forgotten where my feet are. <laughs> yes, and I wasn't sure whether that was really to do with the fact that you kind of lose sight of the reality of who you are, don't you? Um, because everything's so virtual. I'm not sure we're very good at virtual, are we? We're extremely bad. Um, <laughs> we ordered this week... Uh, a webcam. For those of you who don't know what that is, we've we have only just found out what it is. It's a <laughs> I'm thing sure you most people do. Stick on your laptop to increase the quality of um, recording and sound and that sort of thing. So it arrived, and it was ludicrously small compared <laughs> with what we imagined. And uh, I spent quite a long time trying to fit the thing onto <laughs> my um, laptop. Eventually. Eventually you yeah. managed it, but what I actually heard was, I don't understand this thing, I can only see the top of my head. And then yeah. a bit later, why can I only see the top of my head? And then a bit later, ah, oh, I can see all of me now. So yeah. finally our webcam. But it is interesting how tiny it was. I wanted to it smash it with my I heel. You did. But the thing but anyway, is, it then, works. Then what was interesting was it was so tiny. I don't yeah, know if you remember, but uh, we had some Australian friends who when they came to the UK were amazed because they'd seen pictures of squirrels hmm. and assumed they were as big as a kangaroo or at least a wallaby. And when they came and actually saw a red squirrel, they were pretty stunned by how small it was. So no the pictures can lie. Yeah, yeah. Let's have another bit of this poem. Yeah, because it, it really, really interesting. was interesting. I mean, there's a line, obviously, tough times are tough. And then 
a bit later, I need just a moment to rip out these wires and smash close the glass screen that stands between you and me to meet your eyes and remember to see and be seen. And that's our yearning, isn't it? We're doing pretty well at the virtual, but the real yeah. stuff is what we're longing for. I think to know as we are known, and to be known as we know and know as we have been, it's really important. Yeah. For those who it are struggling, is. yeah, yeah. Well, there's some new stuff going on for the poor old UK. Um, you know, we keep talking, don't we, about getting nearer the shore, but we're really smashing into some rocks at the moment. Um, Back to our metaphor. Well done. <laughs> I know. Yes, but I think if you're part of the EU, you'll be feeling the same thing, these rocks and complications as we try and move into this Brexit mm. And it's like new boundaries constantly coming up. Uh, you know, whether we'll be able to travel to the EU in the new year, all sorts of complications. It's yeah. as though we're almost drifting apart. You know, I these think the, that it's, it's a very broad thing, a very, a very varied experience of needing to establish boundaries and work out what they mean. Um, we had um, another letter. We had a lot of... Lot yeah, of, we um, have really interesting coming. things. Um, somebody said, and it's someone who's uh, we've uh, who's written to us before. You mentioned boundaries, restrictions, on which I reflected deeply in the last days. I, I learned from my youngest stage that boundaries about our faith are given by God, and living with an angry, sometimes frightening, sad and solemn, uh, seldom happy f a father whom I loved and understood much better today. I recognise more and more to have mixed both in an absolutely unhealthy way mm. in a child's mind. If the father's power was limited and God's not, how much more it was crucial to not break any of his boundaries. And that pattern that will have started as a child obviously has taken some breaking, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely it has. The thing is, this person goes on, is that until this day, in spite of having many warm and good experiences with Jesus, and my Heavenly Father, I am still afraid and somehow bound to this anxiety. What what if in the last part of my journey I miss it on purpose only to be happy for a little while? Would Jesus take me back when he comes back? Yes, there is forgiveness, and I certainly want and can honestly only be happy when God is blessing it. But still there are many Bible verses that frighten me. Mm. I'm confused. Mm. This week a Christian counsellor told me to be more merciful to me and that God is much more merciful than I think. Yeah. Well, I think that's something you've really been saying, isn't it, for over 30 years, that God is nice. Yeah, and uh, it's f for me, it's it's the thing that has kept me afloat for so I long. Um, and occasionally, as we, I think we've said, people have attacked that a bit and said, that seems very thin. But, you know, I think a lot of people would be very pleased to have a genuine mm. experience of mm. a nice, close, mm. caring God mm. if they could have that. I remember really. once we had a translator, didn't we? I think it was in Switzerland who changed right, yeah. nice into good. Yes, well, it did. Well, that's fine. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. But um, nice. She didn't like it. <laughs> and I stopped and said, that's not what I said. It's the only bit of German I knew, I think. And she <laughs> said, uh, oh, I didn't understand how God no. could be nice. And yeah. I said, well, that's precisely yeah. the point, really. Yeah. Um, it's interesting it tuning in, really, isn't it? Sorry, what were no, you going to right, say? No, it's all right. Go on. Well, I mean, it tuned in so much to so many things we hear. And I was thinking that, you know, we heard from somebody to do with prayer. And oh, my goodness, I found myself thinking, have you been in my head? Mm. Because she said that prayer is fine and it feels pretty natural and all right when it's in your head and you're talking to God. And as soon as you put it out into words, mm. it feels really odd. And she said, I've never been able to pray aloud. If asked to pray aloud, my mind goes blank and I couldn't feel further from God. And I thought, do you know what? That's put that so well, because I don't think when I pray to God, I formulate neat sentences, really. Mm, Sometimes yeah. I do, but I don't feel the need to because he's in my thoughts already. And I don't know. What What do you think? Well, I think it. It's interesting. I mean, you. I mean, you'd have to begin by saying that some people love spontaneous prayer, and in certain um, circumstances, I do. It's and, a privilege. Um, yeah, and and are very happy with it. 
but I know that a lot of people do find it extremely difficult yes. and perhaps it's the reason why in the end you either go for a beautiful liturgy we said this before or the kind of inchoate um, non-fluent communications with God that happen in your own life in your mm. the, the, I'll tell you the problem of people people have said to me that I think is true that the, there comes a moment when excuse our phone <laughs> there comes a moment when um when you pray in front of other people it's it's i don't know what to call it except a sort of revelation of faithless out of your mouth you're thinking that's not actually how i talk to god mm. and and i feel as though i'm um lacking faith because i can't do it in the in this Mm. circle or whatever I mean is. I think that's changed for us when we feel passionately about the person we're praying for and also when we feel comfortable to know that we are simply sitting with that person and bringing them to God but that's different isn't it from when you feel suddenly you're supposed to pray and then there's some very funny things happen yeah well in the old days when I first started writing and I I was just sort of spraying stuff around. I wrote something about prayer because um, none of you will have noticed this, but the word just seems to creep into <laughs> prayer may, an may, awful lot. It may be changing, but it certainly be, at this yeah, time, it was know. all the time. Although I have to say in Germany, they have an equivalent. Oh, they do? They do, and it's just the same. Just the same. It's well, that's interesting. Just the same. It's just the same. Yeah. Okay. So this is why I wrote all those years ago. This was This was the prayer. Okay, let's just uh, right now as we sit here turn away from the hurly-burly and the rush and bustle and the everyday concerns and the towing and praying and the ups and downs and the worries and the problems <laughs> and the endless responsibilities and yesterday's regrets and today's anxieties and tomorrow's fears and uh, let's just uh, just uh, get into that peaceful state where we're just ready to just receive and just listen. Let's just keep silence for just a moment while we just you know, do that. Lobby just want to just ask that this thing we're just going to do, I can't remember just what it is just at the moment, just that it really <laughs> will be just really blessed in a way that's really just right, really help us just to do it in the right way and that all those involved will just really come to know that you just want to just really show them how you really just want them to just realise the truth about just understanding that you're really um, just... <laughs> Well, actually, you know, the this same writer tuned into another problem of mine because she was talking about the prayer circles that right. you find you have sometimes. And the idea is that each person prays as they go around the circle. Oh, yeah. And, and she was saying, you know, that the panic that sets up in her brain as she's trying to concoct what on earth she's going to say when it's her turn. And I think thought myself that my problem always was that I find myself thinking right I could pray about oh no she's taken what I was going to pray about and now all, he's, the best bits, yes, yeah. all the best all the things that we've talked about before and it's like a I sort know. of nightmare past the parcel but actually I remember just say, okay. saying about that I remember being at Easter people and um, being asked on, on stage there were about six people asked each one to to say why they were there. Um, oh no, at, that's at, dangerous you know, with yes, you. What to you say mean? to God why they were there. And they all took the best ones. And in the <laughs> end, I, I said, all for the money. <laughs> and Rob Pross said, well, you must be being paid a lot more than the rest of us if you came here for the money. But yeah, no, you're right. You, yeah. Anyway, go on. I think it's breaking into these things, isn't it? And do you remember we inherited a Bible study group in a church when we were in Hailsham. I do, They'd yeah. had a, a Bible study group that had grown and grown and grown and needed to be broken in half. And we got half. And it turned out that all of them were really frightened and fed up with this sort of prayer circle idea. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but we we decided we needed to break into that quite forcibly really and so what we did was we had a chat at the beginning of all the things people wanted to pray about and we wrote them on a big board and put them in the middle and then nobody was allowed to pray out loud yeah that's um right. it's probably a bit bizarre i suppose looking back at it but we lit a candle if you remember and we played some beautiful classical music and we said nope you're not allowed 
to pray out loud. And we well, did that it, yeah, for several weeks. I think weeks. it just broke, broke the ground and, it and let something pattern. else go. But I'll tell you something interesting about that. I remember later on, someone new came to the group and said, oh, it's just like a shopping list, your prayer, <laughs> which was, you know, is the other thing to avoid. But it's interesting how you go in one direction mm. with something mm. and it turns into something else. I guess. But I, I, I think it changed things for the I better. I remember really. that as yeah. being such a relief to most people. And then after a while, it began to change again. Yeah. And people felt able to tentatively put a few words together until it became a comfortable. Yeah. And I remember praying in that group and really enjoying it in lots and lots of ways. And yeah. actually, in the end, it was more about people getting to trust each other yes it was which it always is actually yeah and that care for each other which meant that they didn't mind what words that's they used. right you could try things out yeah. yeah here's another person another person we've, we've been in touch with quite a bit says a few reflections on prayer i used to have a bible study group in my home which was for a bunch of misfits that jesus would very proudly call his it was a bunch of guys, all of whom were on disability pensions, all were oh, yeah. single and unlikely for that to ever change, except me, married with kids on a good income. And they grounded me in the reality of life. There was one person, a victim of a stroke in his teens, very intelligent but socially awkward in every way, and he'd trot out sayings like, Satan had got the church by the balls, <laughs> and then go on to quote Hebrews 10.24. <laughs> One day, after a rather long and heartfelt prayer by one person, he said, thank God that's over. <laughs> I'd love to have been a member of that group. Well, we had that experience. Do you remember we used to go in to do a little service in uh, in one of the homes for people suffering from dementia? Do you remember? And a I friend do, of yeah. ours used to produce these beautiful little things that people tended to enjoy. And this time he brought some harvest fruits and he'd only just started. And what was it somebody said? Why don't you shut your gob? Why don't gob? you sit down and shut your gob? <laughs> that was the matron. No, it wasn't. It was oh, I love it. We when thought things... we'd like to take that lady and go around the churches with her. It's nice good. though, isn't it, when things just break into things. And I remember when I was teaching years ago, one of the members of staff, her husband had died. And uh, obviously everybody was very upset for her. And there was a little boy, well, actually, he wasn't that little. I think he was about 11, and he had Down syndrome. Mm. And he was kind of picking up on the general emotion. He was the son of another of the teachers. And we were all sitting there trying to think of what to say, and it was all very sad. And suddenly he said, one, two, three, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it it's was so funny. inappropriate that it made us all laugh. Yeah. And suddenly there was something lovely happened, and suddenly everybody was able to talk and I think were much more helpful after he'd done yeah. his little, uh, yeah. Yeah, some um, looking back, I mean, over the people we've known, um, I don't know. I mean, I remember one friend in particular who you obviously you'll remember called Paul. Of course, I think we've talked um, about him before. On we this. He's one of our uh, heroes, isn't he? I, I don't know if Paul ever prayed. I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah, he but, had but learning difficulties based on did, epilepsy yeah, that he'd yeah. had for years and he had giantism, didn't he? He was one of the finest people <laughs> we've ever known. And once or twice people knowing he came to our house every week wanted wanted to get him converted and mm. uh, the problem with Paul was he'd have gone with anything. I mean if he'd become a frog worshipper if you'd yeah. given him a leaflet about it. Um and he was a gift from God to us, um, a, a fantastic gift. And I don't think, as far as I know, he ever made any visible or, or spoken commitment to Jesus. Mm. But I do know, I mean, I, I'm actually, my theology is quite orthodox, actually. People tell me it's not, but it is. But there is... Absolutely no doubt that walking up to the gates of heaven, if they exist, um, I would say to the angel who's waiting to say, <laughs> computer says no, or computer says yes, I would say, actually, I'm a friend of Paul Taphouse. I know. And I, I know. think that might be quite handy. 
Yes. When I reached that Absolutely. place. And we've known one or two people like that, haven't oh, we? There yeah. was a lady in our um, Bible study group back in Hailsham and uh, she had worked in a leper hospital, hadn't she? And she yeah. was full of stories and full of interesting things. She became very, very poorly and ended up in hospital. Mm. And seeing her through the eyes of the nurses in this hospital, she was just a funny little nothing ill lady, really, yeah. with very weepy legs. Do you remember? It was, of course I remember. Uh, if yeah. it wasn't for people from the church going on a very regular basis she wouldn't have got her dinner and she she was a poor wee thing in her late 80s yeah. but she was a hero of the faith and she was a christian she? well she was an oh, avowed so christian much so. and worked in africa and yeah she was so interesting and i remember one day in the hospital they brought a sandwich for her and left it out of her reach do you remember i do and she still said they're so kind mm -hmm. in here. They're so mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. because her way was to bring warmth and love and mm -hmm. appreciation to people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so, why I love yeah, so much are. this focus on the very elderly at the moment to do with this vaccination because mm -hmm. you don't know their stories. No. Nobody would have known looking at Lily what a remarkable person she was. Nobody no. would have known meeting Paul Taphouse. Yeah. What a remarkable man he was. I like was. to think of them in heaven, don't you? Paul Taphouse, the lady who had the first vaccination, Well, perhaps. you don't know. <laughs> Lily. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know. I know I'm not in charge of that, so I'm never going to be no. in charge of it. But, no. um, but it is lovely to think of the first will be last and actually think yeah. of that being a reality at the moment amid all the other things and still a lot of grief and still a lot of hardship yeah. but some yeah so go on praying things. go on talking to god it really is worth it but it can be as real as you want it and to as be. ragged as, as you feel ragged as you want it to be <laughs> yeah see you next time bye-bye bye-bye